Hey, how are y'all doing? So today I got a trade to go over with you, a winning trade, and that is Euro AUD. So we're going to break it down, get into it, get into those details. So I'm going to clear off this chart and I'm going to start from scratch so we understand everything. So let's start on the daily chart here. So Euro AUD, what is the larger time frame trend on this? What does it look like? Well, we are operating within a bullish market structure, okay? And why do I say that we're operating within a bullish market structure? When did that switch happen? Well, see, once we broke above this swing high right here, that, is, that was our shift to market structure. If you look at my cursor, right when we broke that high, then we put in a swing low level. At that point, we're confirmed, took out these highs, boom, boom, boom. So the daily chart, it's important that you understand that this is 100% operating within a bullish market structure. So that means that I am trading with a larger time frame trend, which is always, always nice. Okay. It improves our odds of success. Now let's go down to a four hour. All right. So now we get more down into the details of our entry to be more precise, right? Because we already know what the bias is. We, we've established what the bias is just by looking at the daily time frame. We know we are trading with the overall tide of this play. But now we need to get precise and figure out an entry on this. How are we going to get on board that move? right so there is a level of support in here i want you to identify it real quickly before i go any further i want you to just shoot your shot where do you think i'm gonna that i'm gonna that i'm gonna pinpoint for you i want you to take a second and i want you to do it remember my talks if you if you've watched my videos on youtube thus far if you watched my series on support resistance all that good stuff you should be able to identify this level. What is it? The level of support. Where's that level of support? It's right here. So why did I, why am I marking this level? Remember, uh, I want you to think for a moment about basic support and resistance. Resistance when broken becomes support going forward, right? What is resistance? Resistance is an area on a chart where price has failed to move higher in the past. This was the absolute high before price pulled back. It failed to move higher. And then you get a nice, really intense move to the upside, which just completely demolishes that level of resistance, making it support. And this is key. This is key. It's inside what? It's inside of a fair value gap imbalance. Okay. Remember, when those levels like that are inside of an imbalance, they're usually very sensitive price levels, okay? They're respected much better whenever you have them inside of a imbalance, right? That is our level of support right there. That, that's our level. That is our point of interest, okay? Let's go down to a one hour. Oh, and we also, I'm going to note this as well because this is... We're we'll talk about this in a second. I want to mark the low of the fair value gap because what do y'all think that's going to be? In short, it's going to be a stop out point, okay? Because if price was to break below that level, then the structure invalidates itself and I was wrong about the direction. So that that's where my stop was, okay? So now we're on a 15 minute chart. Well, actually, let's go to a one hour. Let's not skip the one hour. So the one hour chart, you can see we pulled back this morning Okay, uh, seven o'clock came around with seven o'clock. Seven o'clock is when it's the start of our New York kill zone. Price pulls back and we got our entry right there. So there's something else interesting in there. I want you to pinpoint. We have our 50 institutional price level. 50 is an institutional price level. Other institutional price levels consist of your zero, zero, your 20 and your 80. Those are your institutional price levels. So we got 50 in here check it's inside of that imbalance check we have a key level of support check we have key fibonacci retracement and ote if that's your thing so if we were to take our fibonacci from this low right here to the high of that rally we got 61 percent retracement within that range that's a big bonus as well and clearly obviously if we got 61 percent, we got a discount market as well because it's below 50 percent equilibrium so we got several things lining up here. See how we got several things just boom, boom, boom. We got several things here. And yeah, so my stop was right below this level because if it was to break below that, my my thesis on where I think on, on the current structure would be proven incorrect if it was to break below that. Okay, it was a, or it started off as a two to one risk reward. So meaning you risk one to make two. So 
that was my stop, but my PT was up here. Now, I didn't go into this play, all right? Remember this video that I made not that long ago on, I don't remember the title of it, but I talked about risk reward. This is a good risk reward ratio, two to one, but I, this is this is 100% aligned with the current market structure. This two to one is 100% aligned with this market structure because my stop was right here, but if it was to break below that level, the structure would invalidate itself. It would no longer be no good, right? And my stop was up here because that's a big, that's, um we got buy stops, buy side liquidity right there. So it's a good risk reward ratio, but it's also within the market structure. That's how you need to play. Like, as I've said before, there's nothing wrong with having a set risk reward that you look for, that you go into the market and look for, but you want to make sure that it is operating within the market structure that you're trading, right? You don't want to force your risk reward ratio. So that was what we had on Euro AUD two to one. Now, clearly, um, I played it safe since we had high impact news. It didn't with this one. It didn't, it didn't have much of a reaction really, uh, but I still played it safe and I bailed. I, I got a I got one to one on it. I bailed just as it was like here. Let me go down to a fifteen minute chart. It's right when we had this crack was when I bailed because I figured. Uh, just, I still think it's gonna go. I want to make that clear. It's starting to it's starting to peak up here, but at this point, it's outside of my kill zone. Got to follow my rules. But I still think this thing's gonna go. I still think it's going to come up and clean out these highs right here. But because I knew we had two at uh, two o'clock PM Eastern time, FOMC, I didn't want to mess with it. I saw we had this big crack lower right here. See that we had this big crack. We had a shift in market structure, displacement, lower fair value gap. So even though I was overall bullish still, we got to consider the timing. This was at coming into at the end of 11. So that leaves just a few more hours and now we have that momentum that just kind of basically got killed in the short term if it was going to do it i wanted to see it do it right there and the fact that this momentum got killed on that displacement lower it, it's um i figured it was safer to just take my profit since i was still up nicely on the play green trade great setup but we have high impact news and i'm not i'm not risking that i'm not risking holding through high impact news it just ain't worth it i'm up i'm gonna be happy be content with that Again, still bullish, still bullish overall. Okay, so I don't want to give off the impression that I'm bearish. I think the Saints just going to sell off to nothing, dwindle down to nothing now. It's still overall larger time frame bullish. It's strictly for the news. Strictly was the reason I bailed was because of news. Okay. So that was Euro AUD. So solid, solid setup, just beautiful. I mean, you can't get much better respect for a level than that. I mean, look at that beautiful respect for that level, right? All right, let's talk about some other stuff. All right, so you, I've, I've been, um, I've been talking about this quite, a, quite a lot in my free Discord chat link in the video description. This Euro USD. Uh, it's a little bit noisy. Let me clear this off, because I want. This is where, this is basically where I want to keep your focus. So you see right here, see this bullish order block. I've been really hammering this in chat that you need to pay attention to this area right here. I think you get a really solid play, a really solid bounce play off this level here that's coming up here pretty soon. Uh, could I be wrong? Sure. I mean, it could just completely dwindle, smash this thing into nothing and sell off. But chances are, chances are more likely than not, you're going to get a really nice bounce off this level here. Okay. So I would keep a very close eye on that, right? I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you to hold on for dear life, go all in. That's not what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on your lower time frames as well because that's your higher time frame level. But now we want to see that lower time frame confirmation because we want to see that there's actually some buying interest in this thing, right? We don't want to just buy buying or, I mean, you could. I'm not going to say that you got to completely wait for the lower time frame confirmation because there's different strategies, different ways of doing things. If that might be enough for you to just grab it for a bounce play and then look for some upper objectives. But, if you want to play it safe, I'll say the safest play is to wait for that lower. Your safest play is to wait for that lower time frame confirmation. That's the safest bet, right? So keep a very close eye on this. That's just what I wanted to say with that one. All right, now we got GBP USD, and I want to bring up the chat as well right here, just so um, to give some context. Okay, so again, everything everything is posted in my free Discord chat. Okay, everything that I'm talking about was posted this morning in my free Discord chat. You know, I'm not one of these hindsight gurus. Everything I do beforehand, if it's a loss, it's still posted beforehand. If it's a win, it's still posted beforehand, right? 
And so you can see there was that Euro AUD that I just talked about a second ago. See that? You can read that real briefly there. Pause the video if you need to. That was what we were looking at. And then um, Euro USD, which I just went over as well. I posted that bullish order block and you could read that. Pause it if you need. Pause the video if you need to. Read all that. And let's see. What else? Nope, there it was. So this is what we're going over next. This is a daily chart of GBP USD. I said right now we're rejecting off of a daily bearish order block filled in the daily fair value gap completely. This could give you a nice short here soon for anybody that doesn't know what short means. It means that you're betting against something. So we're anticipating lower prices on GBP USD, right? But I could, I would be conservative with your PT. Let's go to a four hour now. There's your four hour. So you can see I outlined that four hour level of support right there. That's what I mean when I said you want to be conservative with your PT. I would be very careful holding through that level because it could bounce there, have a nice bounce off that level. But, um, oh, and there is the one hour. So you can see, I like I indicated this morning, that I think we're going to push up into these levels of resistance. That's your previous swing low inside of an imbalance. Remember our talks on that. When you have that criteria, that becomes a very sensitive price level. That's a level of resistance. But right above that, we have our bearish order block as well. See that? That's your bearish order block. Look at my cursor. So we have that level of resistance. We have our bearish order block up key Fibonacci retracement, imbalance, confirmation, boom, boom, boom. We got higher time frame level that is rejecting off of, which is this upper blue line. That's your higher time frame. So we have several things lining up here. We have a higher time frame. We have our lower time frame displacement. We have our drawn liquidity. Um, several things here, as you can see. There was the rest of what I typed. Again, pause if you need to read it. So yeah, uh, there's the order block. Let's pot it on there real quick. See this? Look at my cursor. That's our higher time frame level because we recently had a really strong shift in market structure on GBP USD. Right there, there was that displacement on your daily chart. And then we see how we came up and we completely rebalanced that portion of price action. It is 100% efficiently delivered at this point. That portion of price action, we tested a higher time frame level of resistance, AKA our bearish order block. So our higher time frame at the moment or at the time that I posted that, it was pointing to the downside, right? And then I, we have this right here. Same talk. Uh, previous high broken was resistance. Resistance when broken becomes support going forward. Inside of an imbalance at that, making it a very sensitive price point. That was a level of interest that we wanted to be aware of for like PTs, right? And all right, so there's that's the four hour. Now let's go to the one hour. This morning... During the London session, we had the displacement. So you can see we came up originally up into our larger time frame level. We pulled back. We kind of consolidated. There was really no displacement yet. It was just kind of chopping around, trying to make up its mind. And then, boom, you get a nice move lower, a really strong move lower, a lot of conviction there, right? That's that displacement off of your larger time frame level, okay? And so you can see what happened next price ended up retracing. Why? Because it was in a short term discount right here. It retraced back up into a premium marketplace, tested your bearish order block, tested your level of resistance. You even had key Fibonacci retracement, 61%. Or if you, for the individuals who like um, OTE, you had that as well. And rebalanced that price action. It retraced pretty, pretty deep into it. So... It did that, came up and tested that 20 institutional price level, which is where eventually it topped out at. And then it fell apart and exactly, exactly came down into this, this um, level of support on, or this level of support right here, which is where it's still playing around with, having some trouble with. So that was a really, just a really solid short opportunity. Again, there's that bearish order block. See that? Bearish order block. And then there's that, that low right there as well. That was worth noting which is inside of the imbalance. So I had a few levels in there marked and just, I mean, picture perfect, picture perfect play right there. Doesn't get much cleaner, beautiful risk reward as well. So if you were to be patient, for example, say you were to wait to, let's see what it would have been. Okay. So say you were to wait for the order block, right? We're not going to pretend that we caught like the very top of it. And I mean, of course that would be beautiful risk reward, but let's, let's be realistic here. Um, we're, we're, that's not really a realistic go to try to catch the exact top in the exact bottom. So let's just be realistic. So you took it up into this order block and let's say you're risking the high. What is that? What's the risk reward on something like that? And you take it down into that four hour level. That's over two to one, just like that. And you're playing within the structure as well. Again, 
this is this is a tr a really amazing risk reward ratio. It's a high probability trade at that because you have a you have a larger time frame level. You're trading with the structure. I mean, you have the influence of London session in your favor as well, which makes it higher probability. I mean, you had your displacement. I mean, everything checking off the list here, right? And it's beautiful risk reward over two to one. Okay, so that is that's just a beautiful, beautiful play there. Beautiful fall through. Okay. And if you're patient enough to wait for trades like that consistently with risk reward like that, if you wanted to, I mean, shoo, I mean, you're talking, you're talking about money, talking about money. Okay. And lastly for Forex, I'll go over ES here as well in a second. I posted this as well. Uh, we're pushing up into some resistance right here. See that low? See, we're pushing up into that resistance on AUDCHF. Bias is bearish on it. Larger time frame is bearish and it is playing. It tapped up into that imbalance, tapped up into that level of resistance having some trouble here but yeah so we'll see what they ends up doing but let's go ahead over to es because i know a lot of a lot of you guys want to know my analysis on that one so i actually posted something the other day i posted something on twitter i'm gonna go to that real briefly so we're on the same page all right so you see right here i said es posted a couple pictures so i like i pinpointed we're coming down into a bullish order or a, a bullish order block on the weekly chart but it's not i can't say it's a high probability order block we don't got the fair value gap which is very important for high probability order blocks it's very wiki which is an ideal as well uh so it ain't the best it ain't the best weekly bullish order block but i still think it could have some respect for it here pretty soon but also the daily charts where it gets quite a more interesting See so yeah, how we took out this low right here? That's a pretty decent size liquidity pull. A lot of sell stops resting beneath that level. We swept that level, right? So structure is actually bearish at the moment, but I am anticipating a bit more of a retracement within this range here soon. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. But we have a few things here. We also have a draw on liquidity up here, and that's a draw on liquidity. See right there? Draw on liquidity. And as this individual pointed out, what what about them bearish order blocks? That that could it could cause some trouble up there. I'm not saying it's gonna rip up. Like when I'm when I have this line drawn up right here, I'm not indicating that I think this thing's just gonna rip up and go to the moon here. That's that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's gonna retrace within this range. That's all I'm saying. Low hanging fruit, really just a little bounce off that after taking out, you know, purge and revert, like another individual said. Purge and revert. Yep, that's exactly on on the money. Bingo takes out that swing low. And I want to see it retrace within this range, draw up into this imbalance, efficiently deliver that period of price action. That's it. That's what I'm that's what I'm eyeing. Again, I could be wrong, but that's a very possible scenario that I could see playing out here. Okay. Fast forward today, and it's not doing a whole lot really. Uh it's just it's still kind of tinkering around here. If we were to go to, let's see. Yeah, I'm not really too convinced yet. It hasn't really had any large move up higher. It's just been kind of chopping around in here, coming into FOMC. So it's kind of making up its mind here, consolidating, but I think very, very soon we could get that next continuation move higher, breaking out of this cons consolidation and trade up, take out these buy stops, trade up into that imbalance. That's what I, that's what I think is going to happen here. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you if I think what's going to happen after that. I'm playing, I'm playing price how I see it right now. Okay. That's all I'll do. I'm not, I'm not telling you what's going to happen over the next few months, uh, next few weeks. I'm telling you right now, right now from what price is telling me. Okay. That's what you got to do. You got to listen to price, listen to what price is telling you that can change. Okay. Right now it is, it's, it's actually bearish. It's, it's bearish or short term bullish, but we had that crack of this level. So structure is bearish. So you you just got to listen to what price is telling you. Basically, this is what I'm getting at. If it, if it curls up, for example, and then just boom, blasts through these highs right here, just cracks these highs with a lot of strength, then you, you, my, ch my stance is going to change, right? But that's, that's what I want to see, what I just outlined in that Twitter post.